Thank you. Please. Yeah, so I live in Germany, but I'm from Belgium, so this coming to Vos is a bit like coming home uh, to the better weather also, which is also tradition at Vos um, So what I'm going to talk about is full open educational resources on digital accessibility for building your own courses. Um, this is the output of um, an Erasmus Plus project, so funded by European Commission, that's already ended um, in 2017, but the open education resources we created are still available. So what was the background for this project? Um, basically, we noticed that there was a lack of accessible design in computer design, information design courses in higher education, especially in, in mandatory uh, part of, of uh, higher education. Um, There's also a lack of expertise of university teachers in accessible teaching and accessible. There's also a lack of accessible course materials. Um, it's also a lack of expertise about accessible design in government, industry, and academia. And this is <coughs> becoming very important now, especially because um, the changing legal requirements about accessible accessibility in ICT in Europe. Um, in 2016, um, there was the EU Directive 2016-2102 about accessibility of websites, internets, and apps for public sector bodies. Uh, not for everybody. Um, and there's also an upcoming European Accessibility Act. Um, it was expected to get through the European Parliament uh, last year, but it didn't. Uh, maybe it will work this year. So basically, a lot more people need to know about accessibility in ICT than in the past. Um, so a bit about this directive. As I said, it only applies to public sector bodies. So. Um, uh, city councils, national governments, uh, their websites, also in some countries also uh, public publicly funded universities. Um, and this is already basically in, in, uh, valid now because since 23 September 2018, each year member states were supposed to have <laughs> national laws and regulations that comply with the directive, and it goes on. Um, in 23 September this year, all websites created since, well, since September last year will need to be accessible. Um, and then, almost two years from now, all websites, also the older one from public sector bodies, will need to be accessible. And then also, in 2021, all mobile apps created by public sector bodies or offered by public sector bodies will need to be accessible. Um, but by accessible, we mean uh, basically Full web, which refers to the web content accessibility guidelines created by the W3C. Um, there is also a European uh, standard uh, EN 301549 from Etsy that is freely available um, with accessibility requirements. And these will also be relevant to the European Accessibility Act, which will apply to much more. Um, have just selected a few items, computers and operating systems, ATMs, ticketing machines, check-in machines, smartphones, books. Um, so there's basically um, a lot more. Projects will need to become accessible. Uh, of course, commercial, I mean, vendors of software will, of course, do that. And we wouldn't want the open source community be, to be left behind because they didn't know about it. So that's, that's why I wanted to talk one of the reasons. Um, but as I said at the beginning of my presentation, uh, what I'm talking about is the result of a European project called MOOCAP, or MOOC Accessibility Partnership. It was coordinated by the university where I work, um, Stuttgart Media University in Germany. And um, we had partners from around Europe, so um, um, university in, in, in Oslo, uh, Technical University Dresden, uh, Johannes Kepler University Linz, University of the Aegean, so they're really on the islands of the Aegean, um, Dublin Institute of Technology, the University of Southampton, and the Université Paris 8 in, in France. And what we did in this project, I'm just not going to say, tell the whole story, but some of the main outputs, the most relevant outputs in this context, is that we created 11 online courses on digital accessibility. Um, so one introductory course and then some further courses. Four of these courses were MOOCs. Uh, if you don't know what a MOOC is, it's, MOOC stands for 
massive open online course. Um, there are a few big platforms um, like uh, Future Learn in UK, Annex, Coursera. Um, so, so we put them. Well, some of the courses were MOOCs, and uh, when we, well, some all the registrations um, had about twenty thousand registrations uh, in total for all these courses together. The course that's also a big. It's also uh, there's also always a lot of people who abandon the course uh, during a MOOC or uh, a freely available online course. Um, and not only that, the resources from those courses were made available as open education resources. So uh, they're available on, under the CC BY li license, uh, so Creative Commons license uh, attribution. And we chose this specific license because it's much more important um, to have the largest possible audience for it than to prevent, for example, commercial, um, commercial exploitation by adding the NC uh, clause in from Creative Commons. Um, so it, yes, if you want to use it for creative, uh, commercial purpose, you, you can. Um, we also have well, network. Um, of the partners who were involved, that anyone can join uh, to continue, well, production of, of our resources. Uh, the images at the bottom are some um, images from, um, well, from the resources we created, so-called day in the life stories. Some people would refer to them as personas, but um, they weren't actually based on, on real user research, so we shouldn't call them personas. Uh, basically, the partners involved in the project already had a large body of knowledge about accessibility and used that to create these uh, stories. Um, so I have, we'll talk a little bit about the courses we created. Uh, the, f the first course was an introductory course called Digital Accessibility Enabling Participation in Information Society. It ran on FutureLearn uh, because one of the partners, one of the partners in the project uh, University of Southampton is a member of FutureLearn, so we could host it there. Uh, it was a big uh, legal hassle that led to um, an 18 month delay actually in the project before we could <laughs> actually put, put the course on FutureLearn, but it worked in the end. And this, this course has run four times so far. I don't know if it's going to be repeated, but you can register interest if, if, if you're interested. So, and um, the resources from that course are available on the MOOCAP website, so at moocap.gpi.eu. Um, there you find um, a navigation bar also that um, I will also show at the end that takes you to these to this resources. Um, perhaps I can... Is it going to work? No. Um, so that's <coughs> also where you find those day in the life stories from, uh, that contain the images I showed in the previous slides. Um, so what we have in these resources, it, well, some of those resources are text documents, some of those resources are videos, and those videos are, have captions for accessibility reasons. So people who are um, who are deaf need to be able to, what, to, to, to know what's going on in the dialogue, for example. And those videos are on Vimeo, um, some of them are also on YouTube. But the downside of YouTube is that you can't um, download videos from YouTube Without, violate, without violating um, YouTube's terms of, <laughs> terms of use. Uh, <laughs> of course, I know there are browser plugins and Python scripts that, that do that. But, yeah. uh, so we put them on video where it's actually the default option to make the video part of the course. Yeah. So we have also text documents, quizzes. Um, basically, those documents stored on uh, Google Docs. So you can download them, add them, um, edit them, whatever you like. Um, so this, this is a view of, oops, yeah. That was not what I intended. Um, so an example video uh, on Vimeo, uh, where we have, so there's, there's the MOOCAP um, account on, on Vimeo has several channels for each, well, a channel for each course where I have the videos for these courses. Um, so this, this was this is from the introduction course. Um, we could talk about a few more. Just 
three more. There was one course called User-Centered Design for Accessibility, which is about involving people with disabilities in, well, ICT design. This, so this was from our part in, in Norway. Uh, this was not, well, a MOOC. They hosted it on their own uh, e-learning platform uh, from Canvas. Um, it has a few videos with uh, Jonathan Lazar, which, which is, well, who is rather an expert in, in this in this course. Um, so if you interested in how to involve people with disabilities in your, well, in open source design, for example, that's something you can look at. Um, a bit of a, a special case um, among the courses we created was one of my colleagues, one of my colleagues uh, about accessible gamification. So a little bit more about gamification and strictly accessibility, but still interesting. Uh, and this is one of the courses we managed to put on edX, uh, thanks to a partnership between Stuttgart Media University and um, Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech is a member of edX and we aren't. Um, if you wonder why, I inquired about prices for joining edX a few years ago, and they said that prices started at $250,000. Yeah. So that would have been roughly half of the project budget. <laughs> Um, so you can also, this um, might be repeated on Alex, you can still find it there. Um, so it's lots of videos uh, where my colleague Andy Stiegler explains a lot of things about gamification, but also involving a bit of accessibility. But this view is from, from Vimeo, yeah. This link going to work. This have this strange view where I can't see where I'm clicking. Um. Ah, okay. Nice. And then, yeah, it's on a different screen, of course. <laughs> Which direction? Ah, uh, no, nah, this is going to be the wrong way. Okay. Then there's another one um, which I created about user interface personalization. It's also in, in edX. It's going to be repeated starting the 11th of February. This is about basically the fundamentals of creating web applications that can automatically adapt to the user's needs and preferences. So it explains the basics of, of uh, personalization. Uh, it gives you... Uh, some so-called data preference sets, which are JSON files that describe what kind of adaptations a, a specific needs, user would need. And then you can, as an exercise, you can adapt either an example website that I provided or, well, an ex if you would like to use something else, some can use a of your own. Um, it's a fairly short course. But the, the, the last, or the one bit last part, is really just that task of adapting a, a website or web application. So there's, there were a bunch of other courses. Um, one was, for example, inclusive learning and teaching environments, which is really specifically for higher education institutions that want to know how to um, better cater for students with disabilities. Uh, accessible documents is mainly about office formats, how, um, also PDF, including PDF, how to make that accessible. There's a course about accessible mobile apps, uh, one about accessible websites. Um, assistive, assistive analogies, so screen readers, magnifiers, um, but it's interesting to know about them. Um, one called, course called Design Innovation Inc Inclusive Approaches, which is, um, well, by, but, but how you can um, by support innovations by actually including people with disabilities in your design process. And the last one is about intellectual disabilities and inclusion. So if you're interested in these resources, um, so they're on the MOOCAP website. I can perhaps switch to that view anyway. Right. I don't know why the resolution is a bit... Yeah. 
Ah, the D, yeah. So this is um, so the navigation menu. Um, this goes to the explanation of what all the courses are. And this is where you find um, the, the links to all the ed open education resources. Um, all carefully documented with a license and copyright because you still need to um, to um, acknowledge the original author, of course. So, so that's it basically for my presentation. If you have any questions. So the accessibility of the uh, of the materials. So we made, so we made sure that every document uh, is accessible, that every video has um, subtitles. We can also download the subtitles, etc. So that absolutely. Yes. Ironic if you hadn't done that. <laughs> yeah. Also, when we looked at platforms where to host um, the books, we also checked how accessible they were in the past. Because some platforms are not accessible. Are all of the courses still available online in, in some format? So, so whether the courses are still available? Uh, well, as I said, some of these courses were MOOCs. And uh, for, so two were on edX, and they are still exist. Two ran on FutureLearn. Um, well, the content is still there, but I don't know whether they will be repeated. So if you weren't registered before, you can't access them at the moment. Uh, for the other ones, they ran on, on basically the e-learning platforms of, of the, the project partners. So they were available during the duration of the projects, but they're not currently available as, as courses and not to the public at least. So that's why it's important that these uh, resources, these OERs are still available. So anyone can create, to take them and create their own course and their own platform. And if somebody wanted to, to, to take those resources and create their own platform, also they can their own course, yeah, they can do that. That's the point. So where will yeah. they go to find them? Um, so, when, so when you go to this, so this page, so this, this site, yeah. for the, um, the introductory course. Um, and then you find, so this, um, for example, have an accessibility glossary as a PDF. And um, it's, this is on Google Drive, yes. In fact, if it's a document, it's on Google Drive. And it's, if it's a video, it's going to be on Vimeo. So they're still available? Yeah, the resources are available.